Welcome back to the Duncan Duo Radio Show. Um, this is Mike from Atlantic Bay Mortgage. Andrew had to step out, so um, I'm joined by Robert, who's going to fill in for the rest of the show. Robert Johnson from the Duncan Duo. So thanks, Mike. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Um, wanted to kind of kick off this segment uh, with an article I saw this week, and I know we still have a couple months left in the year, but never too early to start thinking about some things to get ready for buying in 2018. Uh, so just wanted to kind of run through some of the steps there. The first one, um, and a lot of these, you know, I think these apply no matter when you're going to buy, but, you know, if, if you're thinking next year is the year, never a bad idea to get started. The first one, check your credit scores. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised, and I'm, I'm sure you see this all the time, I'm surprised how many people don't know their credit score. Right. That's why we always say the first step is to talk to a lender. Um, we want you to know your buying power when you go out, you take a look at homes. You want to know what you're looking for. If you're qualified for 200000 you don't want to be looking at 300000 Right, exactly. And the first step to knowing that is knowing your credit score. You know, there are loans available to a, a huge number of credit scores. You know, you don't have to have perfect credit. You don't have to have a 7 or 750 or right. whatever it is. I mean, there's different programs for different credit scores, which I know, Mike, you can speak to. But know your credit score. Know at least where you are. Um, I think a great site for that is Credit Karma. I know they do... Um, kind of just a mix of different credit programs and it's not perfect but it does give you a good idea of where you are and you can monitor it every month for free. So. Right yeah and I actually um, I direct a lot of people to places like Credit Karma. Um, I will say you know they do use a different scoring model than we use in the, in the mortgage oh, course, industry. Yeah, yeah, you know they use a consumer score so if you have whatever score on Credit Karma pretty much assume it's not going to be same when you have a FICO score. But it does give you a good idea yeah. of where you at least stand. Um, you know, one good thing, especially going through the holidays, don't open new credit cards. Um, in addition to that, is not only not opening new cards, but don't go out and max out the ones that you do have. Yeah, don't don't right? max those out. I mean, it's it's practically just as bad uh, as opening new ones. I mean, your credit gets a hit. Anything that can majorly affect your credit, like opening a new card or maxing one out, right. don't do that. Right, exactly. And, and especially with um, running up the, the accounts that you currently have, that's going to affect what you qualify for because with that higher balance creates a higher payment, which in turn may make you qualify for a less amount of a mortgage. Yeah, and really, I think I feel like the article would have been better if it would have said, don't get any new lines of credit. Right. It, and that would include new furniture, new cars, you know, don't go out and buy a large purchase on any type of credit if you're going to be buying a house. Absolutely. Used, when I was a buyer agent for the team, when I first started out, that's what I used to tell people. Don't do X, Y, and Z exactly. before closing right. or else you probably aren't going to Don't close. do anything except yeah. continue to pay your bills. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, maybe as opposed to getting, you know, material gifts for Christmas or through the holidays, ask for financial gifts. Yeah, and question on that for the audience. I mean, is that something that you're going to have to go through everything and source it all? And like it could. That it, it really just kind of depends on the timing and the loan program as well. So, for example, the, the government loans, the FHA, the VA, the USDA, we generally only need one month of bank statements for those. Mm -hmm. So if you're buying in March, for instance, and you get that gift in December, Odds are we're not going to see that deposit, so we're not going to ask for it. You know, a, a conventional loan, for instance, us, uh, we require two months of bank statements. So again, depending on the timing, we may not need to do that. Um, if you are going to do that and you're worried that a lender, you know, may see that deposit and have to verify it, maybe just ask the donor to write you a check. That way there's at least a way to, to kind of paper trail it. Yeah. Right. Um, interview potential real estate agents. Always a good idea to... To talk to the Duncan Duo first. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and even on our team, I mean, we have a, a plethora of agents. There's agents that are going to mesh with people better than others do, and that's why, you know, it's great to have a choice. That's why a lot of people, uh, they're going to suggest that you interview multiple agents. So you want to find an agent that is on the same page as you, that understands your wants, understands your must-haves, because I think they're two different things. Right. Um, and somebody that is familiar with getting you the best properties at the best deals um, while combining those other two. I mean, you want to have somebody that has your best interest in mind and somebody that's going to represent you and what you want. Right, and one thing that we talk about on the show a lot as well, um, one of the advantages of working with the Duncan Duo and their team, 
with inventory still being light, um, you know, a lot of times the buyer's agent may have access to some homes that are coming soon that haven't quite hit the market yet. Absolutely, and we have homeowners that we, you know, we're in the process of talking to them about getting their listings. Um, some homeowners, they don't like the idea of even having their home on the market. You know, it's, it's an ongoing conversation over a year or two in order to get a listing sometimes. And, you know, many times if we have a buyer and we call them and we say, hey, I, I know you haven't listed with us, but I have a buyer ready to go. They're, they're qualified up to this much. Can we see the property? I mean, a lot of those homeowners are open to it. And, and many times we can make that happen. That's the advantage of working with such a large real estate team such as ours. Right. And one of the last ones on the list is find a good mortgage lender. Um, you know, obviously, <laughs> give me a call. I'm happy to look at it for you. You know, I will say not all mortgage lenders are created equal, right? Absolutely you know that. Not. No, so. and you know, we've had other preferred lenders that we've worked with before. Um, we've had some that, we're, you know, we're no longer partnered with. And it's so important. That's one of the reasons why we're partnered with Atlantic Bay and with Mike in particular. It's important to have a great lender because they can make or break the deal a lot of times even more so than a real estate agent. It's something that's so important in the deal um, you definitely need to find an agent that has a great lender and give Atlantic Bay and Mike a call um, first. I mean, they have great programs. That's why we're partnered with them. Right. Yeah. It's, um, you know, communication, of course, is big Absolutely. in our business. Uh, there's unfortunately a lot of lenders out there that don't communicate. They don't call you back. Your clients don't know what's going on. The agents don't know what's going on. You know, and, and when that happens, a lot of times it puts that closing time in jeopardy which could end up killing a deal. So uh, we'll be back after a quick break to uh, discuss you know, current things going on in the real estate market as well as a few other topics.